glass morphism a word i've been hearing a lot lately it's become a popular trend especially in ui design in a nutshell glass morphism is about using frosted glass as the main element to create a background blur on accompanying elements in the layout since it's so popular nowadays i decided to play around on powerpoint to see if this effect can be used in presentations so today i'll be showing you how to create the glass morphism effect right here in powerpoint so let's start by preparing our workspace now in order to save some time in this video i'm using these pre-made gradients but don't worry i'll be adding all the settings needed for these gradients in this work file which I will make available for download so you can practice this yourself. So let's start by making our background. Let's right click on our slide, go to format background and go to gradient fill. Let's remove the stops that we won't be needing. So if you look at this shape over here, this has three stops. So I'll just be copying these over into the background by using eyedropper. changing the angle. Now that our background is ready, let's get into designing the elements that we'll need for this light. Start by drawing a circle and removing its outline. Then on the circle go to gradient fill and let's create these colors in this circle. Change the type of gradient from linear to radial and then you can adjust the angle. Now let's create a little shine on this circle. In order to do that, let's create another circle. Do gradient fill and in the direction change it to from center. Remove the shape outline. Now what we'll be doing is changing all these colors to light gray. Select the outermost gradient and change its transparency to 100. Select the second gradient and increase its transparency as well. Then go to shape effects and add soft edges. Bring the circle over the previous one and reduce its size. Now if you reduce it too much, it will disappear. And that's our circle with a shine. For our next step, let's create a background element on our slide. In order to do this, I'll just be using our pre-existing shapes. So I'll copy the first one over and adjust its size and positioning. I'll also change it from radial to linear and the direction to linear up. Then I'll copy the second shape over and resize it to fit the previous one. Drag it a little off center so it looks a little something like this. Now as a quick tip I'd recommend that you go to the selection pane and rename all your elements. Since you'll be working with a lot of multiple elements this will make it a lot more efficient. So I'll quickly do that now.
Now that we've done a little bit of housekeeping, our shapes will become much easier to manage. So on to our next step. I'll first hide the shapes that we won't be using for a while. And now let's create our main element of the frosted glass. Let's start by creating a rounded rectangle. Adjust the angles and remove the shape outline. Now right click and go to format shape and go to picture or texture fill. Fill in the texture of newsprint and then increase the transparency. So I've put the transparency at about 70%. Then Duplicate this shape and go to solid fill and fill in a light gray. Adjust this over the previous frosted glass rectangle. You can use the align tools to make sure they're perfectly in sync with each other. Select the white rectangle, right click on it and go to edit points. Click on the right top points and delete them. This creates a slant across the previous rectangle and increase the transparency to almost a hundred percent. This gives us a frosted glass look. Now let's bring back some of the other hidden elements so we can easily see what we've created. Select the circle and the shine and bring them to front. Group them and adjust their size a little. Maybe increase the transparency of the main frosted glass a little bit more. And you can also give it a light gray shape outline. Now that we have this, we need to create the blurred effect in the background. So this line here, if there was actual glass in front of it, this line would be blurred. So we need to make these blurred shapes now. Let's first start by creating a blurred circle behind our frosted glass. So I'm just quickly going to hide our background element and copy our small circle. Make another copy of this. Go to shape format, edit shape, change shape to partial circle. And then take the yellow point and drag it until it's a half sphere. Then go to shape effects, go to soft edges and give it the soft 10 point edge. Adjust it over the main circle and then adjust the height and width so it overlaps the circle. Having done that, you can also copy the shine over. Adjust the size of your circles. and group the elements. Then drag your circle over to the edge of the glass and send it to back. Now it seems like the frosted glass is having a blurring effect on the element behind it. Let's bring back our background element. Now this line also needs to have a blurred effect so let's create that quickly. We'll start by selecting the background element and readjusting it so that it's a thinner line. Add the same shape effect to it of soft edges 10 point and then adjust the height and width. You can then select your glass and bring it to front. 
the small circle, select both elements and bring them to front as well. Now let's have a look. And this is how we create the glass morphism effect. It looks pretty cool and there are a lot of different layouts you can create with this. In the practice file, I've added text and animations for you to try out. In the next video, I'll continue the glass morphism series and show you how to create this effect, where the glass moves across the image, blurring only what's behind it. So stay tuned and I hope you found this useful. So long and thanks for all the fish. See you next time.